All right. Hi, everybody. I am Natalie Dolan. I am an Emerald Ambassador with Plexus Worldwide. And um, I just wanted to share um, some of the most valuable lessons that I've learned throughout the years. Um, I, ha I hit Emerald in October of 2020, um, but it took me four and a half years to get there. Um, I called this call fail or I called this call how to make a plexus come back because I really feel like I did make a plexus come back, but some other things I wanted to call it. I wanted to call it fail forward. I wanted to call it. Uh, I wrote down like five different titles, how to persevere through every season of your plexus business, take ownership of your business. Are you married to your business? Um, keep going, it's worth it. Um, so I had all of those titles and it took me forever to kind of narrow it down. So I stuck with um, how to make a plexus comeback. Um, I don't have one of those, those um, like just stories where I just, you know, like one year to Emerald, like two years to Diamond. Um, it took me four and a half years to get to Emerald. And I want you to know right now, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how long it takes at all. It doesn't matter. Um, you stay in your lane and you run your race because four and a half years ago, when I started Plexus, I was 26 years old. Um, I, I, um, I'm a military wife right now. We live in Key West, Florida, but at the time, um, we were at Fort Bragg, North Carolina, um, in the Raleigh area. Um, and when I started my Plexus business, my, um, youngest son was two months old, had a newborn. My husband was gone, um, for three, three months straight. We had zero communication. He was in this fancy course. And literally we did not talk when he came home. I had a business. Okay. <laughs> um, so yes, like obviously these products completely rocked, um, completely rocked my health. Um, my whole health story is like a whole nother thing, but totally completely revamped my health. And it was one of those things that I was like, oh, I, it's so hard for me not to share this, but I don't want to be one of those people. Um, but I prayed, I asked the Lord, what do I do? I got like three in your face confirmations. So at that point, um, I was, I never posted on social media. I didn't have a big, um, I didn't have like a big following as, you know, um, you know, kind of young, um, just busy with my state, you know, I went to some mom groups, I went to church, you know, um, and so, uh, but I didn't want to be one of those people. I wanted to be popular. I wanted to be, um, I wanted people to like me. I wanted, uh, I didn't want, I didn't even post on social media because I was very concerned about what other people would think about me. Um, if they, I didn't want them to get annoyed if I posted pictures of my kids too much. So I only posted like a couple times a month. Um, I would have never posted a selfie of just me on my Facebook, I would have thought, I would have thought, I don't know, maybe people would think that I was just too into myself or something like that. So um, I had a lot of growing to do. I had a lot of growing to do and I had to push through a lot of stuff um, like that. Um, so I, so anyways, at that point I was like, okay, I have to share. I, I put it out there. Um, I wrote what I had, was experiencing. It got some traction. People were like, well, what are, what is this stuff that you're doing? I started, you know, other people were interested. And so I was like, okay, maybe there's something to this. Um, and so I got plugged into our, our team calls. Um, I started, I, got, I caught the vision on these team calls. Um, that's why I, I preach, you know, the, the, the importance of being on these calls, um, because this is where you catch the vision. Um, and so I was like, all right, I'm going to go all in. There's normal people just like me in my same shoes who have freedom. Um, and at that point I, um, I was hungry for something more. I, um, you know, I was a stay at home mom. I, I became a mom at 19. So I had been a mom for a long time. Um, we were on, um, we, I was on WIC, uh, since I was 18 years old, which is, um, government assistance for food. They give you like food checks. 
Um, and at that point I was just like ready. I was ready for, uh, something different. Right. Um, so I decided I was just going to do whatever the successful people were doing, whatever that meant, I was just going to do it. If they were going to, if whatever they did, I, I was going to do that too. Um, and, and really Plexus met a really big need for me. I really, um, I needed something for myself. I knew that I, um, I knew that I was called to do, you know, to do something else, um, instead of, you know, um, just what I was doing then. I knew that I had gifts and talents that, um, that the Lord wanted to use. Um, and so my story, I have a lot of struggle in my story. I have a lot of things that I overcame in my story, but the, the first point that I want to make before I share with you more of what that struggle is, is, um, the, the, the foundation of, uh, me overcoming the things that I've overcome. The foundation of that was early on. I decided that I was going to be committed. I committed, I decided I married my plexus business. I decided I was going to be in it, um, for the good and the bad for, for richer or poorer in sickness and health. Um, I wasn't going to just dip out because something new and shiny came along. Um, my personality type, I know me and I know that, um, I, I, I like new and shiny. I, you know, if it's not fun, I don't want to do it. Um, I would rather be comfortable. Um, and that's something I, I always have to overcome, you know, I'd rather go, you know, so there, there have been trade-offs, you know, I stopped watching TV, things like that. Um, but I, I decided that I was in it no matter what through the ups and downs. Okay. Uh, and I think that that really is the foundation to persevering through every season, because if you um, are undecided, I see so many people be completely drained and disempowered when they're in this um, back and forth, like, I don't know, or I'll see how it goes, or I'm feeling discouraged. I'm, I don't know, maybe this isn't for me. Maybe, you know, I'm, I just can't decide if this is what I want to do or not. I don't know if I'm going to be good. They waste so much energy in that middle. And it's so disempowering being undecided. Once you're decided, you will, it's, it's all that other, all that drama is gone. It's out the window and you're just, you're on your path. Okay. Um, I believed what they said that if you don't quit, your success is inevitable. Um, I believe that with all that I am, if you don't quit, your success is inevitable because there is a solution to every problem in this business, you know, um, there, there just is, there just is. Um, so I want you to have that mindset. Um, okay. So, so I committed to this business. Um, and at that time I was about a year and a half into working on my prerequisites for, um, I was going to school, um, to become a dental hygienist because I wanted something for me. And I knew that I had potential to build something. Um, but once I found out what Plexus was and caught the vision, um, I wasn't too far in, I was still working on the prereqs and I was taking it pretty slowly. And I decided that Plexus was going to be my plan A, B, and C. I remember I was on like a coaching call with Courtney and Fallon. And I was like, this is my plan A, B, and C. And I meant it. Okay. So that right there is what will take you through that commitment to treating your business like a business, the commitment to growing through any obstacle, um, the commitment to still um, persevering when your circumstances aren't great. Um, that is what will take you through. So I just want to start with that. And I think that is really the key that helped me keep going um, that early on commitment. Um, the second point that I want to make is um, you need to um, develop resilience to overcome any obstacle. Um, that looks like failing forward, trying a lot of new things, the willingness to fail. Um, if you're not failing, um, if you don't have some resistance, then you need to ask yourself, why not? You need to ask yourself, when is the last time I tried something new? 
when is the last time I even put myself in the uh, position to fail? Uh, because because there is that there's a lot to that. You have to de- you have to develop your resilience um, toward failing um, and not assign a lot of meaning to it. Um, and that took time because yeah, failure is inevitable. Um, so I want you guys to expect like go into this expecting and normalizing the resistance. It's totally okay if somebody you know. Um, you know, talks bad about what this is. If you don't have supportive um, family members, I had, um, you know, if you have a bad day, if you're, you have doubt, I have had doubt my whole entire business. Like I, I believed and I, I knew that I could do it and I knew that I was committed, but I still had doubt. I still was like, will I ever get there? I don't know. I'm going to keep on going. I'm pretty sure, you know, but doubt is normal. That's okay. Um, not feeling it, but doing it anyways is, is key. Um, but there are things that you're going to have to work through. There are some mindsets that you're going to have to work through. Um, in my business, I experienced, um, one of the big mindsets that I have had to work through is shame, um, because of all the times that I failed forward, you know, where I wasn't showing up and I, I, I should have done this. I should have done that. And I want you guys to know that that should equals shame. So if you're sitting there, you're like, well, I really should do this. I really should do that. Um, I should have been more this. I should have been, I should have been a better leader. Um, I, I really, um, that really kept me stuck a lot of different times in my business. Um, so I want to share with you guys some, some of uh, the obstacles that I've had to overcome in my business, because you need to know that it's normal and that you can push through these things and still make it to the other side, because all of these things are just seasons and through every storm, you, you, you come out of every storm. We're always, what is it? We're always going, coming out of a storm, going into a storm or in the middle of a storm. It's just kind of how life is. So um, I have gone through deployments. I've gone through um, marital struggles. Um, People have gossiped about me. I've had unsupportive friends and family. Um, I've personally um, had like mental health struggles, a lot of um, like uh, like anxiety, things like that. Um, I have to overcome the fact that I have ADD like every day. I got officially diagnosed like a couple of years ago. Um, and that is, you know, the struggle to focus in my everyday life. It's something that I overcome. Um, uh, back in 2019, um, back in 2019, I, uh, my husband and I were going through a really rough time. And then he, we were heading into a deployment and you kind of in the, in the military, uh, life go having struggling, (laughs) uh, before you go into a deployment is like, it's a thing that we, we all kind of go through, not all of us, but it's definitely a thing where it's, you're about to be separated for a long amount of time. And so it just causes a lot of strain and, and anxiety and things like that. So we were kind of going through that pre-deployment struggle, Um, uh, but the month he was going to deploy, um, it was, I, I pushed for Emerald. This was back in 2019. Um, I pushed for Emerald, uh, the month he was going to deploy and we fell short. Um, I, uh, finished that month around uh, 1300 points. Um, and then my husband deployed, um, And I immediately went into just a really unhealthy place um, where I was having a lot of anxiety and, uh, you know, just with my everyday life with my three boys, they were at like a really tough age and just having everything on my plate. And so I just wasn't handling things well. Um, And so, you know, through that time, I got counseling and things like that, but I was really in, um, I was really in, I went into management mode and I started to develop a lot of shame around the way I was showing up. I started to um, beat myself up about, um, you know, falling short, um, not hitting that goal and then not being able to handle my day-to-day life. Um, and so that was, um, 
that was for, you know, he was deployed for eight months and I was not, I was in management mode and I would kind of come and go and I wasn't the leader I needed to be during that time. Um, I lost, um, during that time, I lost uh, a leader um, and that really, really threw me off. Um, and I really, um, I really beat myself up and I really um, experienced a lot of shame and I, for not being a good leader and all of that. Um, and so all that to say, you know, through that time, um, I, I thought my business was over. I thought, thank, thankfully, I had strong leaders, um, a, a couple strong leaders who were still um, working their business. And so um, I, I was like, well, I can't, I can't quit. Um, I still have people um, who are, you know, who I, I need, I need to be there, you know. Um, and so my husband got back home um, after that time. And I had done a lot of work on myself, a lot of counseling. I got a life coach. I, um, pretty much at that point was resting, but I knew I wasn't quitting. I wanted to quit, but I, I knew I wasn't going to. Um, so what I, what I really did, um, to make a comeback at that time, after being pretty much at my lowest of lows, just really not okay. Not showing up, not, like I had been for years prior, I was a senior Ruby at that point. I went, I went for at the beginning of that deployment in 2019, June of 2019, um, you know, I finished my business at 1300 points and I kind of got comfortable with my paycheck because I, I, uh, I wasn't money driven. Right. Um, and I was just really focused on me and not the people in my business that I needed to serve. Um, and then about towards the end of that deployment, my points were down to just above root, just above Ruby points. Um, and that I, I really started to realize, wow, like I, I need to, I need to step it up. Okay. Um, but I was really stuck mentally. So here's, here's the number one thing that I did to get unstuck, to make a comeback. I wrote on my mirror, I have this big full length mirror in my bathroom. I wrote at the top, um, I got connected to my pain points. And so at the top, I wrote, what happens if I don't work my plexus business? And I wrote down things like, I will feel like I wasted my potential. I will feel like I wasted my time. I will, I will have let my team down. I won't be inspiring anybody. I will lose my platform to influence other people. I won't I probably won't get financial freedom. I, I won't be able to travel the world. I will have let my family down. I told, I've been, I was tell, I've been telling my kids for years that I was going to take them to Disney world. When I hit, when I hit Emerald I was telling them that for years, I will have let them down. And I got so connected with it. And I read through that list for, for weeks. I left it up there. I would look at that. I would read through it because as a person who is pain avoidant, it was painful for me to look at my back office and see people who had quit. It was painful for me to um, show up every day and be organized with my time. And, but, but when I started looking at the pain of letting my business fail and how that would make me feel, that grew so, that was so much greater pain for me than the pain of just showing up every day and being consistent with my business and, and looking at, you know, my back office, people who had quit or whatever, like that became so little in my mind compared to what I would have to give up for my future. So that's number one thing I did. Um, I started, I started, show, I picked myself up I decided, okay, I'm just going to keep on going. I started investing back in my business. I started taking business courses. I started just showing up every day, doing my IPA, um, leading. I started leading by example. Um, I, uh, you know, I, in, in my, in our team chat, I, I made it a place of, uh, encouragement where we would build each other up, where we would shout each other out, where we would all cheer for each other and recognize each other and love on each other. Um, because I believed what John Maxwell said, uh, that culture eats strategy for lunch. And that took my team from 
you know, in a pretty, in a fairly short amount of time, it took us from whatever I had been a senior Ruby for two years. And then to finally hitting, um, to finally hitting Emerald in October of 2020. Um, and it was a journey. (laughs) Okay. My, my final point that I want to leave with you guys, um, is the final point I want to leave with you guys is that I just want, I want you guys to keep going. I want you guys to decide to keep going because it is worth it. All, all the, the, the trade-offs, the, um, all of the, uh, you know, the times where you have to be more disciplined with your time. I've never been a schedule girl. I have always been a spontaneous for whatever happens today happens. Um, but, but I had to decide to, to not be that way. Okay. I had to, you know, I had to decide that those trade-offs of being regimented of growing, waking up early, um, not watching TV. I just wanted to lay around and watch TV. No, I, I have to work my business. I have to do what I have to do because people are counting on us to show up. I want you guys to realize that our obedience is tied to other people's blessings. If we are not obedient to our call, other people are not going to receive their blessing. They're just not. The people aren't going to get their healing. They're not going to catch the vision. They're not, they're not going to get off of wick. They're not going to retire their husband. Their daughter's not going to ballet class if you're not obedient. And I want you guys to take that serious. And I want you guys to um, know that this journey is a, um, we walk by faith in this journey, not by sight. Okay. You're not gonna, it's, you're not, you're not going to know what it's going to look like at diamond and it doesn't matter. You're just called to take one step today. um, Because it's a faith journey. Okay. You have to have so much faith. Okay. But you have to trust it and know that all of the, all the trade-offs, all the struggles, all the ups and downs, the mindset trash that you have to overcome, all the growth you have to do, you have to excavate all the crap up outside of you and get it out so that you can be the best person that you need to become in order to get where you need to go. Okay. Um, I want you to I want this to be solid in you that success is inevitable if you don't quit because every problem, there is a solution to every single problem there, every single problem, there is a solution. I promise you, it's not you, you just, it's not, there's no problem with you. You are exactly who you're the right person for the job. You just have to work on it. Okay. You just have to become that person and solve your problems. Um, so just know that it's going to feel amazing and it is worth it. Once you get there, it felt incredible when I paid, when I got my first Emerald check and I took my family to Disney world in cash for five days, that felt incredible. And I knew that because I didn't give up, I I got amazing memories with my family and we will never forget that trip. We'll never forget that. And now the, the, the way the, the, the stress that we don't have to experience anymore is, is worth it. The, all the lives that you get to change is worth it. All the people you get to bring with you it's so worth it. Okay. So just keep going because you can do this. So that's all I've got. Um, believe in you guys and y'all have a 